Uh, it's six o'clock. Let's call the meeting, the February 2nd meeting to order. You guys ready? Is everybody ready? Great. Um, item number one, set adjust agenda. Do we have? I think we got everything. Yep, check, check. Okay, so no adjustments to the agenda. We have uh, no audience. I don't see anybody else online, so go ahead and skip communication with the audience. We have Select Board to approve minutes of the regular Select Board meeting January 19th, 2023, minutes of the public hearing January 19th, 2023, and the minutes of the special Select Board meeting of January 24th, 2023. Motion was Eric just motioned to approve all of them. Move to approve both. That's okay. Right. <laughs> Second. Any discussion? Great. Okay. Thank you for writing such great minutes. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes of January 19th and January 24th? Aye. 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 All right. Ayes have it. We have the town manager's report given by David Upson. I just heard the door shut. Should, okay. we, should we wait? Sure. See if it's Danny. Oh, Danny called and said he's not coming tonight. Oh, okay. Okay. So, that's so not carry on. Time. That's not Danny. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, quick report here. Uh, the town of Woodbury has agreed to compensate us in the amount of $6,000 a year for plowing West Woodbury and grading two times in the summer. We will take over the plow route going forward for the rest of this winter for $3,000. We assumed that it was about half, halfway through the winter. Um, and then we're not going to do the trade of labor. We're just, they, they have them, you know, three-man crew, we have our guys, they need to be in Woodbury working on road projects in the summer and not hauling our sand. Okay. So this will just cover our cost to do that part of the, their, the roads in West Woodbury. Um, I need to provide Hardwick Electric Board of Commissioners with a few dates in March. That would work for a joint meeting with the select board. Amanda's gonna send out a doodle poll. So we'll get that scheduled for March. Um, and then we have $3,000 in the FY23 budget for fireworks for Springfest. We've decided not to do fireworks because of the cost. Um, with the increase in the minimum show to $6,000 and opting out of the fundraising for the remaining $3,000, I would like to reallocate the current budget amount of $3,000 to be donated to Kiwanis for Springfest activities. Um, I think in the future we should just have a line item in the budget for Springfest. And I think when we decided against fireworks, that was the intention. Okay. I just yep. need a formal, like... Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Okay. Um, do we, we don't need a formal vote for that, do we, Eric? Just a... The, the board generally agrees okay. that that's a great idea. Okay. <laughs> and then um, Tracy Martin submitted the Downtown Transportation Fund grant for the additional 200000 for the pedestrian bridge project. Um, this grant opportunity became available to us because we are now, uh, don't mean to steal your thunder, we're gonna bring it up. Um, we're now designated downtown. So that, those funds are made available to it's us. It's been on the news, people have been coming in. Yeah, today. good. Yeah. And when do we hear about that? <clears throat> um, probably in the, the, the state's kind of delayed on their yeah. announcements for grants. So I would say probably a month, okay. but I'm not sure. Yeah, that's I don't know exactly. A month? That's not that long. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's long. Maybe nine months. It's an unknown thing. <laughs> yeah. Flip a coin. <laughs> maybe April. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, that's what I got. Awesome. Any questions for Opie? Great. That was a quick one. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Should we come back for, t is Tom coming in? Maybe? I don't know. Do you have anything to report on roads? Um, they pushed back the banks on some of the roads today, or yesterday maybe, and they've had some minor breakdowns. Um, Tom's truck just got new springs, but I think everything is up and running right now. Um, and they're 
probably be out in the morning. I think we're supposed to get a little bit of something tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But just that's about it. Okay. Great. I just I think the roads have been really I've been super on top of it this yeah. year and it's been really appreciated. Awesome. Thank you. Good evening, Mike. Good evening. <laughs> We're cruising through the agenda. Um, great. So next we have the Hardwick Police Department report given by um, Mike Henry. So we've had uh, issues with the equipment lately. Um, that's been a big thing. Uh, we got uh, three radars that uh, we had issues with. We sent them in to get repaired, got them back, got one uh, back. Still had the same problems. We had to send them back again. Uh, so. We have uh, what's our watch guard system, which is an in-car camera system. Same thing, that malfunctions, so we're sending that out uh, to get repaired. That's not looking good because uh, when we talked to the company today, they said, uh, oh, sounds like the whole thing just went kaput. So we gotta, we're looking at probably $900 to repair that, just that one item right there. Uh, then we have the hybrid car that we have. We had a battery that went bad in it, so mm -hmm. we repaired that. Didn't know there's two batteries. They decided, oh, looks like the other battery's bad as well. <laughs> so we had to replace that. Uh, so equipment-wise, we've been having uh, a few problems. Um, but <clears throat> on a positive note, we did get the uh, snowmobile, snowmobile patrol up and running this last weekend. And uh, you know we're out there uh, running all weekend long. I think uh, we had a good presence out there. We had a lot of uh, inspections. I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 50 inspections that were done on snowmobiles plus contacts. Uh, I forgot to grab the numbers on that, but we had a lot of contacts out there. So that was good. I, hopefully that uh, uh, people will realize that we're on the rail trail there to get them to slow down. Uh, that helped. Um, we have, I, I know that Dan, Danny had a question on that. Danny's not here. Oh, he's not here. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry, one sec. Um, Tracy's waiting to get into the meeting. Oh, no. Like, I had a really good question about the hybrid. Are any of those pieces of equipment under warranty? No. Awesome. It's a 2020. <laughs> And the batteries are not under warranty, wow. if you can believe that. So the explanation I got from Memorial Valley Ford is that they, I guess they warranty, we, when we went to replace the first battery, we were within the warranty window by days. Wow. And because it was a police cruiser and we have all the extra electronics in there, they frowned upon doing a warranty mm -hmm. because of the added electronics. And yet they sell them for that purpose. Right. So yeah. that's that's what I got from them okay. on, on, on that one, on the hybrid, on the mm -hmm. first battery. But it was out of, it's out of warranty now because it was like a couple days. It, it so, should, it really shouldn't have been out of warranty. Didn't want to get into that too much. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I was not happy yeah. that, that they weren't going to cover it uh, because when we got it back after the first battery was fixed, we still had a light on. Call them about that, so mm -hmm. it was still an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not Mobile Valley Ford, it's actually Ford. Right, yeah. So they approved the warranties, so they tried. Um, so, Senior Center, we're, uh, you know, we, we're a little bit busier with that now, with people coming in, so I have a uh, schedule uh, for that. Uh, the people who are mostly using that, uh, they can get into the schedule electronically. I can allow certain people in. I just can't allow everybody in on the schedule because it's just a Google Docs schedule that I have. But uh, if somebody wants to get on the schedule for that, they can contact the town manager, contact me or Scott Gagnon, and uh, see if there's an opening if they want to use that. We really want to make sure that, that space is being utilized. Uh, the uh, taxes for AARP will be up there starting tomorrow, I believe, Friday. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so they'll be doing Tuesdays and Fridays okay. at the uh, senior center. Sorry, Eric, were you saying something? 
No, I think somebody just popped in and they're just okay. not on mute. And that's a free service, right, Mike? The yes. ARP? Yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you. It's nice to see you in person. <laughs> Any questions for Mike? Great. Thank you. All right. So we've moved on to item number one, which is select board to consider appointing Emily Hirschberger to the Hardwick Energy Committee. And I saw... Um, oh. I, so um, I asked Emily to provide me with an email stating why she wanted to be on the Energy, energy Committee. Um, I asked her to come to the meeting tonight. She has a board meeting down at the co-op, so I told her I would read the email. Perfect. And I think we all know Emily, and I think this email and the fact that she's doing, she has other duties tonight. Um, so Emily is, I'm interested in joining the Hardwick, Hardwick's Energy Committee to help Hardwick ener with energy efficiency initiatives. Energy efficiency will be focused, will be a focus in my work and at home over the next few years. With the help of Bill Chitsey, the co-op co is working towards significantly reducing its energy use over the next couple of years. I purchased my home here in Hardwick two years ago, and it needs insulation and energy work. As I explore energy savings activities and initiatives for my home and work, I want to help my community with the information I learned. I've been living around the Hardwick area for about 20 years, and I've been living in the village for five home and work. I would like to help my community. So, Great. it's from Emily. One just really quick question before we make a motion. Are yep. there terms for the energy committee? Like are there different seats and different terms or it's all one year? It's a free for all. It's a free Okay. Yeah. Bill's here. Bill, do you know do you have a that will be on our agenda as we gain members for okay. we'll have full we'll officers. I think this is the first official member, right? And this is the beginning. <laughs> Okay, so if we appoint Emily, it would just be for a term of the Energy Committee. Yeah. There's just, okay. Yeah. okay. When, when defined. Yeah. Yeah. So motion to appoint Emily Hershberger to the Energy Committee. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, we don't have anybody else. Awesome. Congratulations, Emily. Thank you. All right, item number two, we have um, Bill Chidsey here, I believe, to talk about the um, Energy Committee work with the window dressers to better sustain the heating of town built buildings. I think that's probably why you're here, Bill. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if there are any questions about the window dressers program from Maine. Um, I'm not sure if there are any questions about the window dressers program from Maine. Um, you may have already got the flyer by email. I didn't want to take much time because I know it's budget time, uh, but um, I have been, I have known about it for a number of years, but their uh, president lives in Glover, his name is Jack, and uh, he and Kevin from Crassberry both have big programs in their towns. So we are lucky to be neighbors and have that type of uh, leadership to learn from, to do a good program here right from the start. Um, I wanted you to, I wanted to just take a moment to thank Diana Hedlewski and Paul Fix. Uh, Diana's from Woodbury and Paul, they reached out to uh, window dressers and that's how it came to me, so, uh, to their credit. And we had our first informational get together uh, about two and a half weeks ago in this building and it was well attended, 15 residents. Uh, my biggest job in it is to uh, find members who will take the training to know how to do it properly. And there's quite a, quite a good instructional resource on that, but I think I have what it takes to make sure we get that organizational work done first. Uh, and I'd like to come to the select board about it because I'd like, I'd like it to be supported by the Energy Committee, so because of that, um, we want to make sure our reputation is perfect and that we don't get complaints. Is this, are you wanting to support an educational program or a product? We have those. We, we, have, we have those. They're in the no, they're back. Different. They're different. And you can <laughs> do what you want with them. Okay. Those are color. So, mm -hmm. um, 
window dressers is a nonprofit, and the way it works is that um, a, a town like ours or an organization can use their system to help people get inside storm windows. So even their system big, being what? Their system is a system of training people how to build the windows themselves and keep it organized so that when, a, let's say a, a homeowner wanted three window inserts, a volunteer has to be trained to go and measure those windows and know how to uh, get an invoice for them for how much they cost. And then that homeowner has to agree to participate in a community bill organization or oh, <coughs> um, meeting. So, the window dresser sends tools to our town. We get to keep them for about a week or 10 days while we organize the building. And then the homeowner takes the windows home. So it's, it's quite, it's an interesting process. There are details about it on their website. And I don't know if I've answered your question or not. Yeah, it's basically both. It's both. Uh... Right, it's, it's, and if the homeowner, you say that the homeowner has to participate in the build. Suppose the homeowner is a little old lady who's never used a hammer. Well, there are, many, there are many sub-chapters on subjects just like that. So if a person's unable to participate, that's accepted. If a person is unable to pay, that is accepted, and widow dressers actually gives away 30% of their frames and materials. And uh, both Craftsbury and Glover organizations in town donate to the program and make more available for uh, people who can't afford. Okay. And that would include, of course, seniors. A whole right. number of people would fit into that category. So, uh, and uh, our, on our end, we are completely volunteers. No one is on any type of uh, payroll or staff. Mm -hmm. We're volunteers. Bill, what is your goal for um, having this start? What's your kind of timeline? Well, the trainings are the most important part in uh, getting commitments from uh, community members to take those roles. So one day after, we have to uh, get the word out through emails and gatherings that it's possible, it's available, and see who will sign up, and then get them trained. So I'm thinking half of the Energy Committee meeting will be for this project and um, then in, in between energy committee meetings there will be an email. So twice a month we'll be contact. So the goal would be to maybe have this a build by next fall, like this yeah. fall or something yeah. like that? Great. Uh, window dressers actually is part time. They uh, close down for part of the year. So the measuring and the order taking happens in the spring and summer. Mm -hmm. The orders go in in August, and then you get in their schedule for the borrow tools and your event. And, and they have regional managers that are there to make sure you get it. So basically what you're, you're bringing this to us is this event wouldn't really happen until August or the fall. It's really just to let us know that this is something the Energy Committee is working on. Is there anything that you need from the select board other than a thumbs up that this sounds like a great program? Well, that, that helps. <laughs> and it, I wonder if we're like-minded that I like it led by a town committee rather than an uh, ad hoc. Mm. Um, and uh, I would take full responsibility for the accounting that needs to take place. <coughs> I mean, the idea that we're gifting, you know, and that uh, we're taking money and sending it to Maine. Uh, I'll set up a little QuickBooks on that so it's transparent. Yes, that's that would be a good question for Kate for Casey, right? If, if it's if they're collecting money under they're the collecting town. Money. Yeah. So it sounds like a good next step, Bill, would be to talk to Casey and then maybe even see how Crassberry because I know Crassbury, it is the energy committee that also runs the same program, mm -hmm. how that works financially with the town. That's high on my list in those cases of go-to. Oh, great. 
So then I uh, had the last thing very quickly. This is the uh, Municipal Energy Resilience Program. And uh, these I don't know if you have. And I don't need them back. But um, I'll be working to make sure that both Tracy and David are on, you know, informed of everything that I find out about this. But this, this is a lot of money for this town to do some very, very positive action. So I'm not, basically it looks like to me this year the Energy Committee will be after that, as hard as we can be, and roll out this window dressers program. It'll be a better year than last year. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thank thanks, you. Thanks for all your work, Bill. Any other questions or discussion about the Energy Committee's work? Good job. Item three, select board to consider approval of a liquor license application. And we also have Tanya Chase on the phone too, I believe. Hi there. So we have an a application for a first and third class liquor license for a new restaurant going to 41 South Bay with pork and pork. And actually Mark Rao is on this tonight if anybody has any questions for him. But This is taking, this is where the, the scale block. house was? Yeah. yeah. The scale house was. Okay. Did Eric say something? Yeah, yeah I, I think Mark when he thought he was going to open. And Mark's muted. Mm -hmm. Mark, can you hear us? There we go. I'm figuring this all out. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Mark. Oh my gosh. Hey. Um, I don't have anything to add, really. Just um, we're going to open up, hopefully, um, um, May to mid-May. Um, got a lot of work to do in there. So. Great. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Thank, thank you, Mark. Great. I move we grant them the license. Can, what's the difference between the first class and third class? One is to sell it, one is to serve it? Is that? No, uh, one's for no, beer and wine. First is to sell and serve beer and wine, and third is spirits. Got it. Yeah. That's it. So, Wiz made a motion. Yep. I move that we approve both first and third class liquor licenses for the Great. Eric, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take that as a second because Wiz made a motion before you, but I'm gonna consider that a second. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor of approving the liquor license application for the cork and fork, please say aye. 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 Thanks, guys. Great, thank, thank you, you, Mark. <laughs> Go back out in the sun. <laughs> One more um, item four, select board to consider approving the Better Connections grant resolution. Um, and I believe we have Tracy Martin on the call as well to yeah. talk us through this. Great. I'm just on in case anybody has questions about the program. Thanks for calling in, Tracy. Does anybody have any questions? Can you? We've can already. You or can you put Mark on mute or did he leave? There you go. He's on mute. Okay. I think he did. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm familiar with this already. Do you, does anybody else not know what this is? Hmm. Eric, do you have any questions? He's muted. <laughs> he looks confused. Um, if there aren't any questions with Sherry, mm, do you want to? Okay. Oh, I'm happy to make a motion that we um, approve the Better Connections grant resolution. Second. All those in favor of uh, approving the Better Connections grant resolution, please say aye. 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 Good deal. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Um, item five, business manager to present the FY23 second quarter budget update. 
Everyone. Hi, Casey. Can you hear me okay? We can. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so this is the budget update for the first six months of the fiscal year. Um, and so revenues are pretty much on track. We've got a couple categories running a little ahead of schedule, as you can see in the summary. Um, we would expect to be at 50%. Overall, we're about considering our expected tax revenues were just under 52%, so we are on track for that. Um, questions about revenue? I, I love the grant revenue. Um, I don't know if you're screen sharing or if I should or not. Yeah, Amanda was just I, uh, screen sharing. Yep. I was saying I love the grant revenue that we budgeted four hundred dollars and we've got essentially sixteen thousand dollars come in. Right. Not bad. Yeah, four thousand percent. Right. Right. Four thousand percent. And Casey, just want to quickly explain why we keep the budget low. You've done it before, but it just is helpful for the for the grant revenue. I, I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. Do you just want to do you just want to quickly explain why we have the grant revenue budgeted at four hundred dollars? Because the only real guaranteed grant revenue we typically know about in that category is the Green Up Day grant, which is $400. Um, the other grant revenue that we received were two um, ones that we had not planned for the LCT grant and the municipal planning grant. We don't generally budget for the grants because we don't always know what we're going to get. Perfect. Thanks. It still looks good. <laughs> Any other questions about the Any budget update? Great. Well, thank you, Casey. Expenses? And then I'll move on to expenses, if that's OK. Yep. OK. So again, we should be at about 50% for expenses. We are actually slightly over 53.45. However, I will note that all of our VCL, DLCT insurances, workers' comp, passive, and unemployment have been paid all the way through 630. So those expenses are done. Um, so it's not, even though we are a little bit over, it's not really cause for concern right at the moment. Um, Office is slightly over budget due to insurances, um, conference and dues, and especially computer services. And I think I mentioned this when we were working on the budget that our computer services would need to probably double, which we did for the fiscal year 24 budget because we have um, network annual fees, email accounts, IT services, the monthly records room for COT. Um, so there's a lot of things that are encompassed in that category. So we will increase accordingly in the fiscal year 24 budget. Um, buildings are a little bit ahead of schedule, but again, the insurance is paid. Um, fire department is a little bit over due to equipment repairs and increased fuel cost. Uh, police department is ahead of schedule insurance and legal expenses, cost grant expense, which is offset by revenue. Um, um, trails is slightly over, but it, it's it's such a small budget that again it's not really a concern. So at this point, we're running about three and a half percent over, but all the insurances are paid, so no cause for concern. We'll have a lot better idea of where we're gonna land probably after at the next report on March 31st, we'll have a better idea, but not a real big cause for concern right now. Is it why is that blurry at the bottom? Casey, this line for appropriations, are they the appropriations we make that the town votes on at town meeting? The ones that last year. Yes. And so the actual, basically, people are supposed to submit invoices or make a formal request to disperse those funds, and I really just haven't heard from a lot of people. Since I did this report, though, it seems like in the last week or so, I've gotten a few that have come in. Um, the rescue squad came through recently, and we got a few more appropriations, but it really just depends on, you know, people need to ask for the money right. because I have to have invoices to pay them, so I don't just automatically disperse it. So it's just a matter of them sending a request over for us to disperse that 
So if their organization had an appropriation approved, they should get in touch with you to get the money. Absolutely. Okay. Send a letter request, right. basically. Um, Casey, would it be possible at the March update to, to do a similar update of the organizations that have requested the ARPA funds that we gifted? We can, yes. There is going to be something in the town report that will show um, what's been dispersed so far. Okay. Um, but I'm happy to provide some report to you. Um, on, we have dispersed well, the wastewater plant, but 166,000 of um, the other 350-ish. So, but yes, I can certainly provide something to you. I, do, I did do a ARPA report in the town report. Okay, great. Thank you. When does the town report come out? I get mailed on February 21st, maybe something like that. I've already turned it into the printer. The proof will be here tomorrow. Um, they have the mailing list, so then I'll just get printed. And I think they get mailed on the 21st of February. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Casey? Great. Well, thank you so much, Casey. You too. All right, okay. next we have um, item six select board to consider approval of one year NEPBA <laughs> contract for the police department bargaining unit. You want a summary? Yes, yes please. please. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what we did was we're going to do a one year contract. Okay. Um, we revamped the pay scale. Um, to be slightly more, we agreed to be slightly more competitive with some of the area, um, some of the other departments in the area. So we don't want to be really low or really high. For example, you know, Morseville or more um, Montpelier starting rate with no experience is thirty-two dollars an hour, and we're at twenty-three for our starting, and we got rid of. Um, one of the steps, so we go right from, instead of academy and training, we just go training, which is includes the academy and FTO, the FTO period. Um, so with the revamp of the pay scale, um, we added, uh, the, the employees agreed to, from 18 to 20% to employee paid healthcare benefits. So the, that was, a you know, they're in line with everybody else. Um, the town, the road crew agreed to the same thing, although their contract's not ready yet. Um, we added fitness pay. So um, twice a year, was it twice a year or once a year? Once, once a year. Um, they can do um, a rowing machine with uh, set standards and uh, they can get a bonus pay. Um, so it's an incentive to stay in shape. And, um, and then we did a, a special duty pay. So if someone, um, when it's approved by the chief, uh, someone gets certified to be an FTO or a use of force instructor, um, they would get a, an annual um, stipend, which will be paid out, uh, I think, quarterly. Um, so, and then not everybody can be, you know, we're not going to have everybody in the department trained to do use of force. So it's, it's kind of just, you, you get picked based on your skills and your performance in the job. Um, we, um, we included the Juneteenth holiday in the paid holidays. Um, the the guys agreed to equity training in return for that. So we're gonna be um, doing that. They already do, with, through the police academy, for, through the uh, training council, they already do some equity training, but we're gonna just add to it. Um, that's about it. And then we'll re, go ahead. Um, why one year this time? Just because the way, like, we ran into some problems in the, the other contract with pay scales being too low. And so if the, the way things are going in law enforcement, if there's another huge jump for, or, or it goes the other way, we wanna still remain competitive and not be out of the water 
So we figured a one-year contract so we can just stay on the mark with what's going on, you know, across, you know, out, out in the rest of the world. It's typically three years, is that? Typically, yeah. yeah. One or three years. Any other questions? Can I move that we accept the, um, or we ratify the contract? Or, yeah. Second. Great. Okay. You just authorize me to sign the contract after you agree. Uh, yes, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As all, presented. Okay. All those in favor of authorizing our town manager to Sign the contract. Sign the one year contract for the police department bargaining bargaining unit. Please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. All right. Item seven. We have the select board to consider approving a banner application for Hardwick Farmers Market to be hung on Wilkett Street May twelfth through October seventh. They did this last year, right? Is there yeah. So moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> it's a tie. Oh, that's a tie. That's a tie. We'll have to do rock paper, rock paper scissors for that one. Um, great. We have um, Amanda. Did you, did you? What did you want to do for a second? Uh, you said with. Okay, great. So, um, all those in favor of approving the banner application, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Uh, Item eight, we have select board to consider a new road name for the property off of Hopkins Hill. And then there's so, a proposal of Sweetgrass Lane. Is that right? Yes. yes. So we had to do this. You want to give them the summary? Sure. Okay. We had to do this because there's more than um, three houses yeah, yeah. on the road and we're required to, to assign a new road name. Is it, why does it have private behind it? Because it's a private road. We don't. They don't plow. Not, we don't, we plow, don't it. plow it. We don't plow. Okay. Right. <clears throat> it's a. It's a. Essentially, it's a driveway that serves multiple residents, right. and there's a threshold with the state of Vermont on how many residents. Right. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. So earlier this week, there was a list of, of proposed names. Did the residents come in with this as their? Is there a preference? They did, yes. Okay. They came in yesterday. Okay. Yeah. okay. Great. So all we have to do is approve it. Okay. I, um, I move that we approve the name Sweet Grass Lane Private Road. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Excellent. That was our last item. Um, Next, we have select board reports. Nothing for me. Um, I have a short one. Great, go ahead, Eric. Uh, I just want to say I heard from a resident um, last week uh, about noise and um, smell from the snowmobiles on the rail trail, and I uh, suggested she also reached out to Ken Brown in the past. I suggested she also reach out to Jackie Casino. Um, who's the um, person at VTrans who's responsible for the rail trails? Hmm. That's it. That's my thing. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Oh, should I do another? Uh, yeah, you can. We got time. Do we have a yellow? Dude, I'm sorry. I'm that hasn't been announced. That hasn't been. Moving. <laughs> you guys are making serious eye contact through the, the, the Zoom meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Eric cannot see you, I guarantee it. No. So, so just the Yellow Barn is uh, progressing, you know, we got a bid that um, we sent a letter of intent that we want to uh, accept and um, we're just, there's a lot of detail to work through, but it's moving forward. Good news. It's really exciting. Good news. Yeah. Thanks for, for all your hard work on that, Eric. Sherry, did you have a select board report? 
Well, the townhouse will open as of March 1st is our lease, so I haven't said anything about it, but we probably need to start planning for that. I'm not sure if Wayne is planning to come in and open things up as far as the plumbing goes, all that stuff, just keeping it in mind. Yep. Um, I wonder if we shouldn't have said something about warming shelters with the cold coming. Yeah, that's like, what my question is too. Is there... Uh, Typically if there's it's power amazing, outages. right? Oh, okay. Yep. Should we just make any kind of announcement about that or... Um, I don't know. It's, that would be it's part one, of your deal. One night. Yeah. One day. Is it? I thought it was like all weekend and we were going to be in the deep freeze. No? No. Well, that makes me very happy. It's it'll be a little windy, and it's February in Vermont. Right, right. We I suppose so. Yeah. It's not forty below. Ready to move on to new mornings. business yeah. then. Right. I got something. I think we're getting a little soft. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, yeah. we yeah. have any other psych board reports? <laughs> we got new business, old business. I got new business. <clears throat> so the preservation trust is reinstating their apparent tradition of a preservation trust bus tour where they 30 to 35 people i guess the board and i'm not sure who all um but ben doyle contacted me because uh, they want to make a stop in hardwick for their bus tour cool. uh, it's on february 15th they're going to be here between uh 10:30 and 10:40 or so for about 15 minutes downtown, um, I'm gonna greet them because Opie will be uh, somewhere warm, right? <laughs> no, not yet. No. So Opie and I will greet them, and I think Tracy. Uh, they wanted to know about the pedestrian bridge progress. Um, they wanted to know about the what was happening with the Gazette building. So I've asked the Civic Standard folks to prepare some kind of little something, and I was gonna put together sort of a packet that they will get to take home, take with them uh, with information about downtown and stuff. And then they're going on to the Yellow Barn. Uh, and I don't know whether you can be there, Eric. Otherwise, I think they were going to ask, Ben was going to ask Allison if she could be there. But might be nicer if you were there, just saying. What's, what's the date? February 15th, right about 10. Two Wednesdays. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, so I'll be in touch about it, but um, Great. it's kind of nice to be on their scheduled stop. So yeah, we were awesome. gonna talk with Tom about figuring out where they can park their bus that you know maybe in the diner parking lot, roping off an area so that it makes it easy for them to get out and walk downtown and get a cup of coffee or something. I don't know, but it's a good thing. That's awesome. New yeah. business. Did you, That's all. Did you find out where they were coming from? No, I haven't yet. No. Okay. Um, and, and I just want to go back to the lodging for the cold weather. If someone is struggling with lodging and needs warmth, the 211 number, you can get vouchers for lodging. If anybody's watching that needs has any questions for, about that or anybody that comes across somebody. Mm -hmm. 211, when it's this cold, you get vouchers yep. for lodging. Great. That's when it's 15 or uh, 15 degrees or less. I think it's I think that's the threshold for Can housing we, vouchers. Is there any way for us to throw that up on? I know that we have the sign. We can up. put it on the website. It'd be great to put it on the website yep. if anybody's looking. Yep. <clears throat> Great. Any other new business, old business? I guess not. I guess not. All right. That is uh, the end of our meeting at motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn at quarter to seven at six forty-four. <clears throat> Eric, what not the heck? Bad. What? <laughs> Why does it last so long when he's here? <laughs> Eric's frozen. <laughs> no, 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 no.